So you have just finished writing the script of your short film and don't know what to do next. Or perhaps you're feeling a bit stressed before going on to the shoot. In this video, I'll give you some advice on how to prepare for your next production so that everything goes smoothly and you don't have to mess up on set. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Hello guys, I'm Shwadi Mondal and I'm making this video to answer a question a fellow filmmaker of this community had. His name is Kapil Dev and in my previous video he wanted to know how to approach a film after writing the script and what measures can be taken in the pre-production phase in order to make sure that the shooting process goes as smoothly as possibly can. So I'll try to address that question on this video and share a few tips from my experiences of making short films. By the way, if you are new here, please consider subscribing by clicking on the big red subscribe button down there and also click on the bell icon next to it to turn on notifications so that you don't miss any update whenever I upload a new video. Okay, so the first thing that as a filmmaker you have to have is a proper vision. By that what I mean is, you may be the director of the film or the producer or both, whatever the case is, you must be very clear in your mind about what you want to achieve and how your end product, which is your film, will look like when it finally releases. A lot of which is dependent on the cinematography aspect of the film, which defines the visual realm of your story. The very first step of that quest is to set the color palette of your film. Everything that appears in a scene, including props, costumes, set design elements, should respect this color palette. Your film may have one or two or even three or more color palettes, but there should be strong reasoning for that and also those color palettes should remain consistent throughout the respective scenes. You can take inspirations from other films as well. And that is the most obvious thing to do. For this purpose, you can check out filmgrab.com to easily find screenshots from your favorite movies. You can download the screenshots and save them to a folder or better create a mood board and show them to your cinematographer to bring him or her to the same page as you are. That way everyone will have a clearer picture of your vision. This doesn't cost you anything and is more of a mindset. You just need to be aware of the fact that your film should have a color palette and that color palette should be defined at the very beginning of the pre-production stage. Everything after that including costume choices, props, set design till color grading will follow the same color palette. That way your film will have a very defined and consistent look throughout and will not throw people out of the story in between scene changes. For example, if we take The Revenant, then it clearly has two very distinctive color palettes. One is the cooler and gloomy feeling blue to convey the wilderness of the nature and in some other scenes it has a warm orange tone to it where the scenes are taking place inside or in the shelter. And some of the dream sequences have a completely different but consistent surreal look. Similarly, Mad Max Fury Road predominantly has more of a earthy and grungy orange tone to the film. So study the films those appeal to you visually and see the choices that the filmmakers had made in terms of color, costumes, textures and all. Remember, our penultimate objective is to aim for the perfect mise-en-scene for each and every scene. But as independent filmmakers, having limited budget and resources, we have to come up with ways to achieve the best of our ability. You can maximize your production value without increasing your budget by working a bit more smartly. So what you can do is, before going on to your next day's shoot, you need to prepare a detailed shot list which will assist you on the day of shoot or even help you deal with any mishaps that may happen on the set. A shot list is a full log of all the shots you want to include in your film. Essentially, it is a checklist filled with minute details that will give your film a sense of direction and efficiency. That's from Google. I would advise you to include as many details as possible. The more info you have in your shot list, the better. You need to include all the shots you are planning to shoot on the next day along with all the requirements in order to successfully shoot those scenes on the day of shooting. You should have all the actors name required in that particular scene that you are going to shoot on the next day the camera and the camera movements you will use for each scene, the lighting requirements, lens requirements or any other equipment which may be required in any of the scenes. Everything should be listed in your shot list and in order you desire to shoot the scenes. This will help you manage and plan your day of shooting so that you don't end up wasting your or anyone else's time. To better organize your day, you may want to prepare your shot list with an assistant director and give him or her the responsibility to keep check on the shot list to make sure that you have ultimately got all the shots which were planned for the day. In that way, on your production day, you will have less things to worry about and can focus on one scene at a time. Suppose, while preparing the shot list for tomorrow's shoot, which involves say a dialogue scene between two characters A and B, you end up with a total of 39 shots, including all the master shots of character A, his close-ups, reactions and all the other angles you want to take, the master shots of character B, her close-ups, reactions and all the other angles you want to cover and all the necessary B-rolls 
and other establishing shots you may need for that whole scene to play out successfully. So even before going on to the shoot, you know that you only need perfect 39 individual shots for that scene and on the day of production, once you get all those shots and are happy with each one of them, you can call it a day. So you can see, planning your production day beforehand can help you stay focused, stress-free and also save a lot of time. Moreover, if you decide to put the camera placements and movements and the lens choices for each scene in your shot list, then you can imagine how blissful your shoot can be. With respect to all those things, I would also advise you to prepare the shot order as well. Shot order is the order in which you are planning to shoot the scenes for a day. If we take our previous example, you may want to set up the lighting and the production design with respect to character A, take all the necessary shots of him first and then change the angles, lighting if necessary and shoot all the shots required for character B. This change is called turnaround and each time you need to turn around the scene, it will take some time. So prepare your shot list and shot order in a way so that it requires the minimum number of turnarounds on the day of shooting so you can maximize your production. To better visualize your film, you can also storyboard. You don't have to be or hire a great artist to make your storyboards. Even if you can draw in diagrams, that will do. But for smaller productions, I think you can easily skip this part if you are confident enough and clear about your vision. Because it's another step added to the pre-production stage and can eat up a lot of time and energy. And moreover, storyboarding can restrict you and your mind on the day of shoot. As low-budget independent filmmakers, you always have to be flexible and always be able to come up with alternatives. So I would say that work on your shot list and shot order and also have some backup plans ready for anything that you anticipate to go wrong. I think that will save you in most of the situations. As final notes, I would say Schedule your production days in such a way that nobody's time get wasted. Give them the call times accordingly. Rehearse your scenes with the actors as much possible and help them get under the skin of the characters. On the day of production, try to stick to the shot list, respect everyone, be flexible when necessary, be strict all the time, and most importantly, have fun. And if you're planning to get into video production, then I have a great news to share with you. I have prepared a comprehensive cheat sheet exclusively for you. In this PDF file, I have broken down the best options for all the necessary gears you'll ever need Need, including cameras, tripods, lights, softboxes, reflectors, microphones, gimbals, storage devices, everything and put them in three categories depending on your budget and skills. No matter if you are just starting out in YouTube video production or wedding films or ad films or short films or anything in between, you will find the best option to go for that suits your budget and need. You can download the PDF from the first link in the video description below for absolutely free. Please let me know in the comment section below which one of these tips have you found the most interesting and also feel free to let me know if you have anything to add as I invite you to join the discussion. I would love to know your thoughts. So if you have found this video helpful, then please share it with your friends and also give it a thumbs up. Till then, take care and I'll see you in the next video.